Okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks for dropping in to practice. And uh, my name is Jill Davey, and I'm happy to have you here on this True North Insight channel. And especially great to see uh, Sangha community here on the Zoom room as well. <clears throat> So I've been finding it helpful lately for myself. Mm. Um, in times of challenge and stress to uh, be paying attention to these practices that I'm gonna share tonight. <clears throat> and this may be something you're familiar with. Uh, it's certainly becoming more popular and written about and talked about, etc. Um, and it, it may be new to you, so I will um, give some context. <clears throat> so we probably all have heard the word and have experienced in our body, heart, minds, um, what are called triggers and uh we, we may all be going yeah i know what triggers are <laughs> absolutely um and uh so trigger is when our sympathetic nervous system gets triggered like gets uh, it's like a live wire it's like a a nerve the uh, a lot of nerves in the body get touched like a live wire and it can have, um, it's often related, can be related to past traumas um, and not necessarily always. Um, there's several different ways that can be experienced um, and as the system learns to or the system tries to cope with that stress with that trigger and so we can disconnect we can collapse shut down um over time our whole nervous system can become overactive like hyper vigilant hyper um on guard as we try to protect ourselves from what's perceived or is literally potential threats um the and these have been categorized as fight flight freeze and fawn i keep adding more of them at first it was just fight flight um which was like you know the nervous system that that instantly goes into reactivity and anger and defensiveness and um or and flight obviously is um is fleeing and retreating um, mentally, emotionally, energetically, uh, freezing um, is just a, kind of that disconnect or shutting down mm, where people actually can disconnect from themselves and from the moment, certainly. And fawning is um, a more recent addition I'm not sure when that was added but fawn is when the the nervous system responds to threat by being overly nice <laughs> really pleasing really trying to make everything okay and everybody kind and safe and um not being harmful Okay, so uh, that's, you know, just a, a brief touch of, some, of, of what triggers are about. I'm not a therapist, so this is just my uh, rudimentary understanding. <clears throat> In 2018, um, a therapist named Deb Dana, D-A-N-A, -A, I pronounce it Dana because of Polly, but maybe it's Dana, um, in 2018, wrote a book called The Polyvagal Theory in Therapy about uh, this polyvagal nervous system. And this is where the word glimmer 
was first introduced not the, not just the word but the the theory and the understanding of what are called glimmers and the glimmer is you could just think of it as the opposite of a trigger but that might not be very helpful because a trigger feels so dramatic and so uh impactful and a glimmer just like the word is very subtle glimmery uh so because of the understanding of our our whole nervous system heart body mind brain that we there's neuroplasticity that the brain and the nervous system is changeable, flexible. Um, we can change quite dramatically this hard wiring that can get put into place of an overactive nervous system that's always in fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. And one of the very impactful ways of rewiring heart, body, mind is with the practice of glimmers. So a glimmer is uh, sometimes referred to as a micro moment. Of course, everything is a micro moment. Uh, but when we're in a triggered response, we forget moments. Because it seems like it's always been this way. I've always been, you certainly have always been that way. It's always going to be this way. And everything becomes, uh, loses its, it, we stop seeing and experiencing the truth of impermanence because we're creating a, a self that's collapsing into itself. Um, so glimmers are seen or how they actually are, micro moments. Everything is if ephemeral, impermanent, glimmering all the time. But these can pass us by if we're not aware, awake, full of wise intention, wise effort, wise actions to, to look for and to notice these glimmers. A glimmer is different in my from what I understand than like a big the big joys or elation or mm, what what our culture defines as happiness happiness <laughs> it's a, a more subtle little moment of awe um, perhaps something that helps us to feel hope it opens a heart, sweetness. Um, it, it's a way to invite and cultivate sweetness in our life and, and noticing when it's there. Because as we may know about the negativity bias in the brain, which is part of our survival instinct of being an animal, that uh, is part of this whole protection system that the brain actually registers negativity more strongly. And to counter that, we need to have intention, we need to cultivate, we need to look for, feel the sensations of, uh, be open to glimmers. When we're practicing and uh, awake to the glimmers that are already here in this present moment, the nervous system relaxes or begins to relax. We experience ease. You know, ease is, is different than joy, isn't it? It's different than elation, just ease calm, inner calm, inner tranquility, inner peace, regulation, the nervous system becomes regulated instead of hyperactive. Uh, there's a sense of safety, of connection. 
because when we're in a trigger, there is uh, not a sense of safety or connection. Uh, it becomes all-consuming and isolating. And also, interestingly, when the nervous system is uh, looking for and cultivating awareness of glimmers, as they're being called, that um, we also enter into the learning zone. You may have noticed that when you're in a state of trigger, uh, it's very hard to learn anything. It's very hard to think clearly. It's very hard to uh, concentrate or follow through on things. And so this, these practices of calming, regulating, inviting sweetness, noticing sweetness, um, makes it so that we can mm, participate in the rest of the path, the Eightfold Noble Path, with wise effort, wise action, wise speech. We're in a place of interconnectedness and receptiveness. We can engage in the world. Um, so it's, I to me, it's a very important part of the path. Some of the classic, um, classic, well, I don't know why I said that, but uh, um, often cited uh, ways to that people access glimmers is through um, connection with animal beings, all, 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 of, all of nature, all of nature, including the winged, the feathered, finned, many-legged, two-legged, all the beings. Um, it can be sweet little things like a stranger's smile or random acts of kindness or a flower growing through a crack in the cement or... Today I was really noticing the light on the clouds because there were so many things. There were so many glimmers. As soon as you have the intention to look for them, you see them everywhere. The more you practice with it, the more you see them, notice them, feel them. It's not just seeing, of course, it's sensations and uh, smells, tastes, touch. Glimmers, um, we could say, have an energy that they emit or that they evoke evoke would be better yeah um interconnection when we're uh practicing in this way we we're aware of our environment and other beings around us and interconnection um acceptance there's also a sense of oh, this is how it is. So it includes, it, it's not negating or bypassing sorrows and grief and stress, anxiety, all those other aspects that maybe are more triggering. It actually cultivates the capacity to be with the 10,000 joys, 10,000 sorrows, acceptance. Presence, glimmers are noticed in the present moment or micro moment as they're often referred to. Uh, generosity is another aspect of um, the energy of, of practicing in this way. Compassion, again, part of interconnectedness. Uh, lovely word, delight. Delight. Yeah. How much delight are in your is in your days? these days also embodiment embodied because it's in present moment and and we're including all of the sense doors i've been talking a lot about sight but also the smell of a freshly picked ontario strawberry i live in ontario at this time um or uh lovely fabric or the stroke of, of um soft fur, etc. all these sense doors. Yeah. 
So <clears throat> I'll be putting a link to um, Deb Dana or Donna, um, her website, and she has a lot of resources on there, uh, um, PDFs and things that you can download, um, really accessible ways to talk about polyvagal theory, but also um, ways to uh, start making lists, like uh, to gather gather your glimmers so that you're uh, reflecting on them and looking for them. And then they bring these very skillful, wholesome qualities. <clears throat> so I'll put that link down below in the YouTube recording and I'll, I'll pop it in here um, in our Zoom chat. And so how, how to have this um, more in your awareness? First of all, I would say intention to see that it is uh, a skillful skillful qualities to cultivate and have the intention to, to look for them, to note them. So you could do this by taking an awe walk, as it's called, A-W-E, awe walk, where you have an intention to not just go for a walk, to exercise or mm, take our animal companions for a walk, but uh, to go on an awe walk where you are looking for glimmers. Music, of course, can be very um, heart touching and stirring in this way. Um, random acts of kindness, so not just receiving glimmers, but offering them to others, that interconnectedness, uh, without strings attached. <laughs> Important thing to add to that. Um, random acts of kindness without strings attached. They they feel so good. Meditation, of course, is a top of the list way to cultivate awareness of all things um, and including glimmers. Uh, gratitude reflections, working, writing gratitude reflections, or just uh, some time contemplating gratitude, moving the body. So this could be somatically with shaking or um, mm, different somatic movements or just moving the body, period. <laughs> when we're in uh, these triggered states, often the body, um, we disconnect or shut down and um, retreat and don't move very much. Humming is also a sweet way to uh, activate and calm the nervous system in this way. It can be helpful to take some time to reflect on, because sometimes people are like, oh, I don't know, I'm not seeing, there's nothing good happening right now. And so to take some time to reflect when have I felt safe, connected, um, ease? Uh, yeah, to reflect on where were you, what was happening, what were the conditions of that? Uh, so writing or just reflecting and, and then recalling and really bringing those out and and then to look for those or to actually put those things in place again. Yeah. I had a couple of poems that uh, <clears throat> for me touched on this aspect of glimmers. Um, But before I read that, let me just pause for a second. Mm. So mm, for me, I hear the Dharma all through this conversation around um, glimmers and the skillfulness of 
cultivating present moment awareness that's embodied, that's interconnected, that's compassionate, that's um, accepting, that's wise. Um, you may hear in there the threads of the Eightfold Path and certainly of the what are called the Brahma Vihara or divine abodes of uh, friendliness, compassion, joy or mudita and equanimity. These are very much inter inter being with with this awareness and cultivation of glimmers. Hmm. So I think we'll uh, get ready for our meditation practice, which is one of the ways to cultivate and uh, regulate the nervous system. And I'll just read the poem as part of beginning in the meditation. And I'll put the links, of course, to the poems down below um, in the YouTube recording. <laughs> this is a one of the glimmers in my life recently. This was a water bottle with custom made for me by a friend. And this thing actually glows in the dark, <laughs> which is so cool because at night, several times through the night, I'm drinking, I drink water. And so I'm usually feeling around on my nightstand, like trying to not knock things over. Where's my water bottle? And now I look over every night. I'm like, oh, it makes me so happy. It glows in the dark. And it really makes me happy. It's got gold in it too, it glimmers. And it's got a lotus. I mean, that's just sweet. <laughs> so they're everywhere. All right. So before you, um, as you're settling into your posture, before you rest your eyes, um, if you already have and want to continue that way, that's of course fine. But you might like to take some time to look around your space. For instance, as I was practicing more intentionally with this, uh, with these glimmers today, uh, my desk was too messy. <laughs> My space around me was feeling cluttered and um, I was noticing that effect on my nervous system. And so uh, I tidied up a bit, but um, if you look around your space to see what is, is, is there, is there some beauty? Maybe it's the, the light coming in from a window or plant, or are there some objects of connection of joy of sweetness around you might be a water bottle that glows in the dark <laughs> take a moment to look around and see how that feels in your body the effect of these glimmers are is more subtle and we need to attune to it to pay attention to how it feels so Take a moment with that, looking around. Also turning your head is a helpful way to regulate the nervous system somatically. There may be uh, lovely scents or sounds in your environment, as well as sights or uh, perhaps touch. And so you might choose to practice with your eyes resting on something that is easeful, peaceful, beautiful, pleasant, or um, have your hand, uh, sometimes our animal companions uh, like to practice with us. So you might like to feel that sense of touch. You're also welcome, of course, to rest the eyes if that feels helpful or calming.
We're just feeling into this skillful intention to cultivate ease, kindness, inner peace. This poem is called It Could Be by Julia M. Fahrenbacher. It could be a smile or a poem or new daylight that finds you through an open window or perhaps remembering that tomorrow was never promised. It could be the scent of baking bread, the first chill of autumn that has you reaching for your favorite wool sweater. Or maybe it's the noticing of how easily red maple becomes and lets go. It could be taking today off to be still, to unknow, to notice, to practice loosening your troubled grip because grace can never be gripped or grabbed. It could be choosing softness in a world grown hard because you're tired of hurting and being hurt and mercy is the best kind of medicine. It could be an invitation to gather around the listening table where every color is beautiful, where there is no blame, no shame, no them, no other. It could be any of these things or no thing at all that remind you that really only a few things matter. Food, trees, words, love, mostly love. So as you rest into the support that your body is resting on, feel whatever amount of ease and support is available to you right now. It may be helpful to take a few slightly deeper breaths or slightly longer exhalations to help calm and soothe the nervous system. Inviting as much safety as available and possible for you right now. And to begin to open to and notice what sweetness is here for you in this micro moment, rising and passing. The dance of light, 
touch of breeze, the sounds of birds or other beings. This breath. This sense of community. Maybe noticing any area of the body that's not in pain, that feels some other sensation. Softness or tingling or pulse. Inviting ourselves to just rest in this field of interconnection, acceptance, presence. If you feel your nervous system will be supported by resting with an anchor, you might relax onto the waves of breath. 
coming and going, the sweetness of that. Or it could be sound or sensation. It's also fine just to rest in this open awareness. All of these sensations coming and going along with thoughts and with a sense of acceptance and embodied presence. And if at this time you are in a state of trigger, it might be helpful to skillfully reflect and recall times when these qualities of the glimmers have been present for you and to remember that it is possible for you. If you're noticing any restlessness or boredom or dullness of energy, it can be that when we're used to being very activated, feeling calm is very unfamiliar and might feel boring or we might get restless with that. 
So see if you can just feel what are the sensations embodied right now? What does calm feel like? What does ease and safety and connection feel like? And some people can feel stressed because these micro moments are so impermanent. And if you look closely, you will see that that means they're also constantly arising. And it's clinging that causes suffering.
What qualities of awe are here in your meditation? And this poem from Rosemary Watola Tromer. And why not call it miraculous? Just as the sun enters the room and changes the feel, the warmth, and the power to perceive, the right word to can be a beam, can shine into an evening, bring glimmer, tidings of light, make even the darkest corners shine. Yes, even one word can become a prayer, A gate we pass through to find ourselves luminous. So the invitation to cultivate and to look for glimmers, which can only create more ease and kindness and wisdom. Thank you for joining us.